So here's another great new feature in Evoto. This deals with the backdrop changer. Before, in order to keep the shadows, we would go into backdrop changer. Let's use this gradient one here. You'll notice that all the shadows are now missing. What we used to have to do is go to backdrop changer and lower the opacity of the new backdrop starts to bring out the shadows. But notice that it also lightens the backdrop. We wanted that blue gradient. So Evoto added a new add shadow function. Let's start at the top where you have a soft shadow, a hard shadow, and a drop shadow. The soft and hard will add a shadow on the ground. Let me show you. The difference between the soft and hard deals with the sliders underneath. They are presets for these three sliders. You have your opacity, your shadow blur, and your gradient. You'll notice how they change when I go between soft and hard. Soft being 40% opacity, a lot of shadow blur, and a gradient. Where hard also is 40% opacity, no shadow blur, no gradient. You can see this hard shadow here. Underneath that, you have the blend mode. You have normal, overlay, and soft. These deal with contrast and can be a little confusing to understand. Just know this, when you're using a white backdrop change, because of the blend mode, the soft light will not show up. So you need to be in overlay or normal. Let's go back to the blue. Let me also now show you the drop shadow. That takes the image, kind of reproduces it in the background and adds a shadow in the back. But in this case, we're gonna start with either the soft or the hard shadow. Keep in mind, they're both the same other than the presets underneath. Let's start with the soft shadow. Erase the opacity a bit. Something to notice is the shadows are always left to right. But here's something to be aware of. By lowering the opacity, we can see that the shadow actually is right to left. Let's bring the opacity back up. Here we have an adjustment tool for the shadow. Let's click on that. Here you'll see the settings for the shadow. Let's play around with these so you can see what they do. The horizon moves the shadow left to right. Shadow distance will move the shadow around your subject. Let me show you that. So that was right to left, now it's left to right. The shadow angle would be the shadow that a light would create based on where it's related to the subject. Imagine if I had my light here and I was hitting the subject here, I wouldn't want my shadow angle down. If I had the light below the subject, I might want to raise the shadow up. So what we're going to do now is we're going to play around with these shadows until we get them to where we want them. Remember before the shadow is here on the left and right. I'm going to bring the shadow over to the left. I'm going to bring the shadow angle down to the ground. There was a light creating a shadow here. Now we also have anchor points as you can see, left and right. You can show the anchor points or remove the anchor points. Here I wanna see them. I wanna now adjust the shadow so that it fits the image better, just the anchor point. Once I have this set, I'm gonna hit OK. Again, I'm gonna go back to my original opacity and check if I got the shadow to kind of match the original, which is going this way. If I need to adjust it from here, I can. I might even want to raise it up a little bit. So now let's leave the opacity down a bit and then go back to the masking. Now we can see both the original shadow and the new shadow. And again, we can adjust the shadow based on where our original shadow is. I'm kind of okay with this. Remember, this is a drop shadow. It's not going to be perfect. You just need to play around with it to get a decent looking shadow. I'm going to hit OK, pass it back up, and there's our before and our after. Now let's look at the drop shadow. The drop shadow, again, will take this image and create a shadow behind it. So we need to now change the backdrop color. This is the original image. Let's select gray, and then we'll do a drop shadow. If you notice in the original image, there is actually no shadow, but let's say I want one because maybe it looks better. Again, we need to adjust the shadow because it's a little too high. So let's go into the adjustment section. I want to bring this down a bit. So that's the vertical. I also want to move it over to the right a bit. 
hit OK. So I'm going to blur the shadow a bit more. And there's my before and my after. Take your time to create a shadow that you're happy with. This is the new before and after feature in Avoto, as well as the new color match references feature. This is something many people have been asking Avoto to add. If you look on the bottom right, we now have before and after. If you click on this, you get a before and after view. And if you do need to go back, click on the solid square, also known as the loop view, and it'll bring you back. Then again, back to before and after view. There are several different ways to use this feature. Let's go to the portrait retouching section. Now let's start editing the photo. We're going to select the male. I'm going to go down to hair, stray hair removal. What I want you to notice is how the hair was removed from both images. To the top where it says full effect, you have different choices for the reference image. I can leave it on original. You notice how the hair went back. This will always show me the original image, no matter what I do to the edited image. This would be the edited image on the right. On the left, stays normal when original is selected. Now we can select another option for color only. What this will do is when we're in color section, let's change the tint, the temperature. You'll notice that the after and the before only show the color corrections. But again, we're still at the original image on the left when it comes to the portrait retouching. Only the color now is seen. That way, when you're working on a photo, the coloring stays consistent. So you can just work on the portrait retouching without having to see different colors. The next function is full effect. Now it shows you everything on both left and both right. Let's show you by doing a blemish removal on the male. See how it removed his blemishes on left and right? So you see the same on both left and right. And again, if I go to original, you'll notice the before. If I go to color, you'll still see the color, but you won't see the other effects. So now let's look at the new reference view. Currently we're in the before and after. Now we will switch the before and after to reference view. Click on the down arrow and select reference view. Notice that this now changes to reference. We're going to select a reference image by holding option and sliding the new reference image into this position. So now this is our reference image for this photo. I can change these photos by just tapping a new photo, leaving the reference image where it is. In another video, we discussed the new AI color matching. But now when you go to color adjustments, you'll notice the color match shows up here. By clicking this now, it will automatically take the reference image and it will create a color match and apply it to this image. Let's do that now. It created a new profile and it applied it. That's just another way to use the automatic AI color match. Keep in mind, it does add a new profile, which will stay here. If you want to remove it just as before, come to the three little dots and you can delete it. This is the new tattoo removal tool inside of Avoto. This is located under blemish removal at the very bottom. You see it says tattoos. Just click this on and you'll notice the tattoos disappear. Still keeping skin texture, but removing the tattoo. Now you'll notice up here that part of the tattoo is missed. So now select the manual tuning tool. Here we want to add a mask over the area that was missed. Select a plus. Just paint over this area. Hit OK. And it's gone. Now some might ask, why would we want to remove such a large tattoo? In this case, I wouldn't. So let me turn this off. I want to show you something though. In this area of his tattoo, you'll notice that these are clouds in the sky. 
let me show you with the same person's pictures where the tattoo removal actually works really well. We're going to switch images. These are the tattoos here that don't necessarily look great in this image because the rest of the tattoo is hidden behind the shirt. So now let's turn on the tattoo removal. You can see how these disappear. But what I want you to also notice is there's a couple areas that the tattoo removal affected as well as missed. Watch this area here. See how it's affected by the tattoo removal? Also, this one was missed. And notice the texture in the shirt here. You'll see that it gets removed a little bit. So we're going to go back to the manual tuning. Unfortunately, I did use an image where the red in my image does match the mask. But I have to remember where I need to remove. Let's start out with the minus, and we're going to take out this area of the shirt here. You also have the option here to show original image and mask or turn that off. When I turn this off, you can actually see the mask here that's affecting the shirt. You can also see the mask on this area of the shirt. I also want you to notice that it did add some masking here, which removes some of the color, but I kind of like this. So I'm going to leave that and notice how this is mostly missed. So we're going to start with the minus and we're going to subtract the mask from the shirt here. We're also going to come into the area of the texture where you can see the mask and we're going to remove this. And then on the finger where it missed, we're going to hit the plus sign. We're going to add a mask to this. Now I want to hit OK. You'll notice that the shirt is normal. The texture is back. This part of the finger it's fixed. And these are the blue areas I wanted to show you. I kind of like it this way without the blue on the finger. So I just left it there. This is our final image. Have you ever been looking for a function in Evoto and aren't exactly sure to where to look? Now Evoto offers a new feature search. You'll see the search icon on the top left. Let's click on that. Let's say we're looking for the red vein eye adjustment. You'll see here it pulled up the red vein removal. It brings us right to the section. You'll also notice the little yellow pop up on it. Let's try another one. Let's say you wanted to look for dodge and burn. You see here it pulled up these options. This just helps you navigate a little better through a photo. Let's try another one. Background adjustments. And there are many more you can search for.